You need to get some mat on those shoulder pads, bro. Second coat of hard coat now dry. We're ready to move on to the next and final step, which is to apply Lamy Medium. This is just to return it to its matte finish. <coughs> I could handle the hate. The people attacking my knowledge. And me sounding like an autistic child. And the sound of the video. But when someone attacks your painting skills, then you know it's gone too far. Oh, Warhammer fans, how I love you. <laughs> oh my god, it's so stupid. So let's talk about the main man, Simon. I actually agree I was a little too harsh on him. He's a sound guy, but I think I might have to keep that crazy meme, as that's far, far too good to get rid of. Oh, fuck. Please don't let it be me. Please don't let it be me. Okay, I watched the video and it's not. Okay, I'm just going to add my apology here. I'm sorry Simon, it was not my intention to send you any hate. And to truly show that I am sorry, for Simon's benefit, I'm going to bring everyone onto the same level as him as I did in the video, including myself. Can I have uh, the next slide please? Hey everyone, we're at the Ace Hotel, uh, just outside the theatre. Uh, we've got the PC gaming show going live tomorrow, so we're just behind the scenes rehearsing. So let's come inside. It's going to create an entirely exciting new version of Dawn of War. Well, that aged well, didn't it? Now Dauntless, open fire! This guy looks so fed up, I genuinely wonder what he's thinking. Named after his hammer, which allows him to jump over gaps. None of you are so glorious. I think I found the one guy who actually gave the most realistic reaction to that gameplay. We're just outside the theatre. We just showed off our first gameplay for Dawn of War 3, and we're just going to get some people's reactions. You can see the individual units, which in like previous games it looked like a big clutter. 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 And so I kind of liked the separation and being able to tell what's mine in that battle. Oh, I don't even know where to start. Honestly, um, I'm a huge fan of Dawn of War, and it blew me away. They got me. I can't blame people for being like this. When you go to these sorts of events, you do get hyped up and say whatever is the first thing on your mind. I'm guilty of doing it myself, and I pray none of you ever find that video on YouTube. I'm loving the way the game's evolving. The graphics are amazing. The sea is on another level. It looks so good. I found the art style really, really good. Controls are really intuitive. I think it's a game that the devs really are passionate about. I think that's that's an important thing because I think they listen to feedback quite a bit and, you know, they stay active on their forums and stuff like that. Hurt <laughs> fat fuck. Look, I mean, we all know how CFE has turned out on launch, so I'm pretty much more guilty than everybody else in this department. Hey, they got me. I'm not, gonna, I'm not gonna lie. The Dawn of War fans out there know this. They got me at base building. The minute they said base building, I'm just like, sold. And no refund. I really liked it. It's a great strategic game. Graphics and uh, good gameplay like the first Dawn of War. It was amazing. Oh, it's great. Yeah. I'm looking really forward to buy this. <laughs> letting the press play it, but now like the general public and all these wonderful people are lining up for us. It's incredible. Yeah, it's so energizing. How do you think people are faring as they're coming out? I think oh, there's a lot of smiles. I've seen some people jumping for joy. Uh, uh, lots of good tweets. Uh, so yeah, I think, it's, I think people are really digging it. Uh, we must have the most excited fans on the planet. I would say you have the more passionate fans on the planet. Now we head over to PAX to see how the North American audience fed. Americans, if you thought you were getting out of this one, no chance. Uh, was, am I allowed to swear? Can I say bad things? No? Okay, that was amazing. <laughs> I love how it brought back a lot of that classic feeling of Dawn of War 1. There's a lot going on at the same time. Everything is rushing. Everything is just mayhem. 
it's so nostalgic and it looks great. The armies are big, you just get right in the fight super fast. It really reminded me of the original Dawn of War, which I love and, and still love to this day. So it's so cool to see that tradition, you know. Yeah, all the sound effects, all the like the guns, the plasma guns, the flamers, the bolters, everything, things crashing down, it feels so visceral, I guess. The sound effects and all the VFX are just very on point with this game. Needs more wah. Ladies and gentlemen, we finally had the first complaint of Dawn of War 3. It's about time we got there. <laughs> Definitely. I wasn't feeling the wah. I feel like there could have been more wah. They feel like they're elite units. You call them in and they make a difference on the map for sure. They're absolute game changers. They were definitely game changers. There's no doubt about that. But they were kind of a little, just a teeny wincy bit too powerful. What did you think of your first hands-on experience with Dawn of War 3? I love the base building aspect and I love the, the, the zoomed back scale. And this even brings it farther back. See, the problem here is that YouTubers were trying to avoid the more important questions. And that's what really pissed off the community. I really enjoyed just the overall experience of seeing some of the new units. There's some slightly new mechanics in there. So getting to see those and understand them and sort of starting to get glimpses of the narrative and the story in the world of Dawn of War 3 was really fantastic. And what did you think of the Broken Elites and the Somersault in Tactical Dreadnought armor? I understand YouTube is saying they have to like the game. I would be the exact same in that regard, as you're not going to say the game is shit in front of the devs, but clearly these developers or publishers looked for your approval of the game, and I feel that's the problem I have with this. I mean, you could see the backlash on this game from a mile away, and even if both YouTubers liked it, they should have said, I think you can improve on this, or, you know, you might want to address these issues in the game. Constructive criticism is better than just plainly sucking up to keep good connections and then sugarcoating it to your fans when you know it's not really a good game. Can I have the next slide, please? Dawn of War 3 had good attributes that I want to see in Dawn of War 4, and I'm going to mention these as we should acknowledge Relic for what they did well. Super heavy units, without a doubt, we need more of. Maybe it's just me, but the most exciting part of an RTS is seeing the end game units. And in Dawn of War 3, these were one of the things that I loved about the game. Race mechanics are another thing that Dawn of War 3 got right. I felt the power of the WAG was shown beautifully with all the orcs chanting and heavy metal blasting. The space room more streamlined drop pod mechanics were a great improvement and really gave you the sense that they were consistently calling in reinforcements. The Eldar, no, no more shields. I understand what you were trying to do with hit and run tactics, but just don't. However, the Eldar being able to teleport their buildings around was definitely something to praise. Dawn of War 3 also had the escalation mechanics. This is where different phases of the game would affect structures, resources and refunds. I'm not going to go into detail into each phase, but the premise was that you would gain more resources as you moved into each phase, which also gave structures more HP and units would give less money when dying. This was trying to make it so that when in phase 4 you would have so much resources that you could spam large armies. The last good thing about Dawn of War 3 for me was the fleshed out rosters of armies. They really got a lot of the units in there for each army, and of course there were still some missing, but out of all of the Dawn of War games, 3 had the races completed to a nice standard, and it's definitely something I want to see again. Can I have the next slide please? Finally, I can talk about Dawn of War 4. Ever since Dawn of War 3 failed, I've been waiting for someone to make a video on Dawn of War 4, but no one did. Hence why I'm doing it. Now, Dawn of War 4 is an interesting subject for many reasons, and I have a lot to talk about it in this video, so it's probably going to be a long one. <coughs> no one here can deny that we hit the Dawn of War franchise hard. We went in there with bolters blazing and showed Relic and Sega that we were not going to pay for this, and clearly this reflected in their sales. Now, we might think to ourselves, job well done, we got rid of Dawn of War 3, bring on the next instalment. But that's not how the gaming industry works. Because Dawn of War 3 failed so bad, and Sega said it did not meet sales expectations, this means that the higher ups in CEO roles are purely going to look at the Dawn of War franchise and say, we can't do another one of those, as the risk is too great. I'm not claiming I have any insider knowledge on what's happening with the Dawn of War IP, as that would be stupid, but we damaged the Dawn of War IP, and this is probably going to either result in us never getting another Dawn of War game, or they are not going to make it for at least another four years. 
You guys made it clear that you don't think there will be another Dawn of War 4 in the comments section, and I wish I could have replied to many more of you because some of the hate I was getting was brilliant, but also some of the comments were just outright mad. Your insinuation that the fans have failed the game is like saying the Jews should have been nicer to the Nazis. Relic abandoned Dawn of War 3 on February 8th, 2018. I've not said a word since then about the franchise. They are now working on Age of Empires 4. Good luck to those fans of the game. But this means that they are definitely not working on Dawn of War 4. And at the most, it would be early concept art, if anything. But that's a shot in the dark as well. Sega, I'm pretty sure, own the right still to Dawn of War, and unless they've sold it on to another publisher to make it, which could be something done in the future, nothing is probably currently happening. However, I don't think Sega would be willing to sell the rights to Dawn of War unless somewhere in their contract between them and Games Workshop, either it was tied to a number of games and expansions, or there's a break clause in there. Now you may sit back in your chair and say, just because one game did bad doesn't mean that Games Workshop will pull the plug on an entire franchise. Well, this depends on a few things. The first is the contract that Games Workshop has with Sega. Now, luckily, the cousin to Dawn of War, Total War Warhammer, has been holding up its side of the bargain, and has been keeping a good relationship between Sega and Games Workshop. This is good because it proves to Games Workshop that Sega are capable of still making really good games, that makes Games Workshop money. The second reason why is it depends if there's someone with insight and knowledge to know how to make a good Dawn of War game. Let's hypothetically say that Games Workshop has approved Sega to make Dawn of War 4. I think after Dawn of War 3, it would not surprise me if a lot of people at Sega have cold feet and would not know what they should do. You may laugh at that, but clearly the fact they went so far wrong with Dawn of War 3 proves that they were clearly lacking some direction when knowing what to make. So I'm going to take it upon myself in this video and do Relic, Sega and Games Workshop a massive favour. I'm going to show them how to make a lot of money and what people want to see in Dawn of War 4. Can I have the next slide please? From what I've gathered from people and resources, it seems that it's a theme of what people want Dawn of War 4 or the next Dawn of War game to be in the franchise, and I've narrowed it down to five options. These are as follows, Dawn of War Apocalypse, Dawn of War 4 2 style, Dawn of War Remastered, Dawn of War Reboot, and another new type of RTS, Dawn of War. Now you're probably looking at the screen and thinking, what the fuck are you on about mate? But I'm going to explain each one and the pros and cons of each, starting with Dawn of War Apocalypse. Obviously a lot of you know where I'm going with this one, and it's probably the most requested game on that list. Dawn of War Apocalypse mod is great, no doubt there. I could spend a year talking about everything I love about it, but there are problems making this a next Dawn of War game, which I will get to. For those of you that don't know what Apocalypse is, there is a part in life where you have to choose. Going to uni, getting a girlfriend, job, house and kids, or spending money on plastic crack worth hundreds of pounds. I'm very close to the latter choice. My vengeance. I shall hold them back. This obstacle is no more. A reconsideration? Luckily Cylon created a mod for people with this addiction, so they would not have to spend a penny. This added a ton of new things to Dawn of War Soulstorm including three new races, new units many being super heavies and titans, increasing the zoom out range, many more maps and just in general everything you could want in a Dawn of War game. Now of course being a mod it had bugs, I tried playing 4v4 and it crashed on me every single time, but obviously that is due to the engine, so that's fine. Anyway, Apocalypse being the next Dawn of War game would be exciting, with the giant titans and new graphics it would just be an amazing game to play. The problems of it being Apocalypse however, is firstly we are comparing it to something. I can tell you right now that if they made Dawn of War Apocalypse it would be nothing like the mod, at least on launch. The Apocalypse mod has so many assets I've lost count, and with each race having its own building types, infantry, elite, heavy, multiple super heavy units, there's no way any development team will have the funding to do all of that for launch. Dawn of War Apocalypse would have to be taken in steps. The game would launch with four races with expansions coming later down the line. And since the Apocalypse mod has set a standard to what people expect with each race, I feel unless each one is truly fleshed out right from the start, people will just get upset. One problem with the Apocalypse mod was the time to play. This is a nitpicky one, but games can go on for a long time. However, this is where something like the escalation mechanics from Dawn of War 3 could really shine. 
This could be a setting you could turn on, allowing for the game to play out a lot faster, or have it off if you want to play a 4 hour game. This game really does not need to be overcomplicated. Focus on the big fleshed out armies, a good story, grim dark setting without creating unwanted game modes by sticking to Annihilation, and we're good. Now the last thing on Apocalypse is the graphics. An RTS on this scale with amazing graphics would be impressive, but probably your PC's worst nightmare. A lot of you have told me that you would take more content over better graphics for Dawn of War Apocalypse, and it would be the better option for the game of this size. But I've seen many models of what the next Dawn of War 4 game could look like if we ever get it, and it's about time I show you some of these ZBrush, Maya, high and low poly models of what they could look like. Links to all the artists are in the description. If these artists have not been hired, then something is definitely wrong. I mean, it's all good seeing the stuff on YouTube here, but these are the sort of things that never see the light of day, so I hope I can bring some light on them to people who have not seen them. Looking at these assets, I feel the squig off is probably the best shout for graphics for Apocalypse. It has very low poly count for an asset this size and with normal mapping could be made to look really good. Normal mapping, for those of you that don't know, is when you add a texture to an asset where light will hit to give the illusion of it being modelled. It's a great way to save on poly count and allow for more things to be on the screen. Fuck me, one down, four to go. Dawn of War 2 has fans too. It seems many fans of the first game don't believe that, but I like both games equally. Anyway, I'm not going to explain Dawn of War 2, I did that in part 1. A lot of people feel Dawn of War 2 is just a shittier company of heroes with a 40k reskin. Well why is that so bad? Some people don't like army men and want a competitive sci-fi fantasy game. However, Dawn of War 2 would need to step up its game to compete in the bigger markets, addressing things like campaign, balancing issues, more units and options with each race, to put it on par with a game like Company of Heroes. One thing Dawn of War 2 could do is add the hidden cover mechanics from Dawn of War 3. I found they were really used in that game, however a smaller skirmisher game like Dawn of War 2 with victory point control could allow for hidden cover to be a lot more utilised when retaking points and ambushes. If we ever do get another Dawn of War game, which I understand is very unlikely, about the second game, it needs to build off the things that game did right. Whilst new races are fun, this game should look to expand on its hero units and last stand mode. For example, every time you upgrade to the next tier of your base, you should unlock a new hero unit, which plays like your hero being able to be upgraded and leveled up during the game, which you would pick at the start before the match. This is one of those things I liked about Iron Harvest, that it feels these hero units that you can revive when downed, which allows for some great team play, but also adds another asymmetric mechanic to the game. The difference between this though and Dawn of War 3's Elite would be that everyone would unlock the same tier of hero units at the same time, which could be part of some escalation mechanics, but also they could be on the same power and time as your enemy, so one person doesn't pick early game shit just to snowball you to death. But also, more importantly, they wouldn't be broken and actually countered by certain units. Last Stand, Jesus Christ, this could be its own standalone game. Add more heroes in there with powers and abilities and perhaps some more maps and enemies and you've pretty much got a great game. Last Stand needs to be considered just as important as the main game if they ever do make another Dawn of War game that's based around the second. Funny thing is both Dawn of War 1 and 2 have great mod communities with the Apocalypse mod and the Elite mod with each deserving of being its own game. 
Dawn of War 2 overall has its good elements, which I know some fans of 1 will never believe, but from a competitive standpoint, I prefer watching Dawn of War 2. I recommend any of you to check out Injured Cast, as he makes some great videos showing the style of the game. Personally, I would not want the next game to be a Dawn of War 2 theme, since I think Dawn of War needs to move away from the competitive side for now, and focus on milking its first fan base. You better subscribe for the amount of work I'm putting into this. I must have said Dawn of War about a thousand times already. Dawn of War Remastered would be the safest pick. Now, I feel it's important to explain the differences between a remaster, a reboot, and a remake. A remaster is when the same game is taken and updated. This can be moving the code into a new engine which devs might tweak to fit, but this is usually upgrading the graphics and resolution and a few quality of life fixes like bugs and options. Everything else stays the same. A reboot is when it starts over from scratch, being a completely new game but with a similar concept and ideas. Lastly, a remake is made from the ground up but with modern aspects. Everything is kept the same but it's just higher quality, and since I'm not mentioning a remake in this list, it's basically a more time consuming remaster with the result being very similar. A Dawn of War remaster sounds cool on paper, but when you look at the bigger picture I feel a lot of people would regret wanting it. Don't get me wrong, playing through the whole of Dawn of War 1's campaign would be fun again. However, after that, it's not really good for anything. However, if they remastered the first game of all expansions, we might be in business. Nom, nom, nom. Dawn of War Remaster needs to include the other expansions or people will just get bored and go back to Apocalypse. If they add in mod support with the remaster, it's going to be even better, but other than that, it's just the first game with better looking graphics. Before we move on to the reboot, I need to ask the big question. I've seen a lot of other YouTubers cover this in the hobby, but not in Warhammer 40k games. Primaris or not Primaris? This is something that I'm going to talk about in my Space Marine 2 and Warhammer 40k Battlefront video if I ever get around to fucking doing it, but it's clear Games Workshop are making Primaris the new frontline of their hobby, and since 9th edition came out, the only Space Marine model that was not Primaris was the Terminator Chaplain for Warhammer Day. Other than that, I don't think we've had anything that's not part of the whole new Primaris models. Uh, you can't just solve all of our problems by making more Primaris Space Marines! <laughs> the hell I can't! So this begs the question, what will it be for Warhammer 40k games that have Space Marines? Since 8th edition, we've really not had any Space Marine heavy focus games. Yes, we've had Battlefleet Gothic 2, Warhammer 40k Gladius, Inquisitor Marta, Eternal Crew fucking Sade, but nothing really that's had a big push like Dawn of War or a Space Marine game. And the primarist range of models is getting to a point where from an RTS standpoint, they have more than enough units for a game. Maybe lacking a few close combat guys, but really with primaris, Phobos armor, new bikes, tanks and land speeders, they would be enough. I will talk about races later, but perhaps if we ever do get another Dawn of War game or an RTS that's Warhammer 40k based, Primaris may be the units we will be using, and Games Workshop will want that so that when kids play their game, they will recognise their stuff in their shops. So a Dawn of War reboot, in my opinion, should focus around the same structure style of the first game, but with a new story and new units. This could be the story based around a whole new main character like Gabriel, or perhaps a completely new chapter like Imperial Fists or Salamanders. This game would feature new up-to-date models being Primaris, with each original race being Eldar, Orcs, Space Marine and Chaos, all being there with their new models added from the hobby. And also with a story that perhaps is a little bit different and focuses around a different narrative than Space Marines killing Orcs, Eldar are just around there doing their own things and then Chaos intervenes and there's a big battle in the end. But I am going to talk about story in more detail later. A Dawn of War reboot should stick to Dawn of War 1's capacity of units, not apocalypse scale, and just focus on what made the first Dawn of War great. Don't try to overcomplicate things since it's a reboot, just upgrade the graphics, a decent amount of maps, and I feel that is all that is needed. Just focus on making a modern, up-to-date new Dawn of War 1. So the last type of Dawn of War is something that's completely different to what we want, what we know, and what we've had. Yes, I know that sounds very scary, <laughs> but Dawn of War 3 was trying to combine elements of 1 and 2. That's not a bad idea, but obviously the other directions they went in ruined it. Fucking MOBA. But they might try doing that again, and RTS can come in many forms, and we could get a Warhammer 40k game that's like Supreme Commander, Command and Conquer, or Starcraft. I know that's already triggering some of you, but you have to get ready for the worst of what might come. We want to use mobile devices as the platform for a new Dawn of War game. Because nothing brings a family together like slaying heretics. 
Uh, we don't have any plans at the moment to do a uh, PC. Do you guys not have phones? Yeah, you guys that, all have phones. Phone, right? Hey look, that shit could happen, but it's not all bad. If we ever do get another Dawn of War game, it should be similar to the first. I mean, it's not always bad to try something new, but if we ever do get something new, just keep it grounded and try new starting races, a different type of campaign and story, and maybe different mechanics, as long as they are still RTS based, then I don't think it'd be too bad to try something different. But this version is obviously the one that people really don't want. I think Space Marines should be in the next game because they're really cool and Space well, Marines haven't had like, like, ages and they're always like really old and they have been so they have this race and 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 they have Everyone wants their race to be in the game, but there's a reason why we always seem to get the same few, mainly because of marketing and sales. I mean, Warhammer 40k games have never been made for the fans. They've always been made to get people into buying the miniatures, hence why we always get the same few. If we ever do get another Dawn of War game, which I must have said about a thousand times by now, they're going to do the exact same again and doing it from the perspective of getting a new player into the hobby. Now obviously I'm going to choose four races on what I think will be a good fit for another Dawn of War game, but also how they will fit into the game with the story and the marketing. The first thing to establish is how previous Dawn of War games and other Warhammer games have done their races. You have the first good starting race that's usually a tutorial for you when you first start playing. You then have the first bad guy race that usually is a bit more difficult to play, but will be your first enemy when playing. You then have the second goodish race that you don't really meet until you've done a few fights with the first enemy that usually results in them holding a key part of the story. And then the final boss enemy race that really pushes to sell the game. Personally, I feel Dawn of War should take a page out of Total War Warhammer's way of doing new races and content. I know people love expansions, but I fear when it comes to adding new content, Total War Warhammer are leading the way. And this would be a great way of getting rid of the problem of unfinished races if they ever did something like Apocalypse that could be added later in some form of DLC. For example, keep big expansions for when you're adding new races, but if you're trying to finish off a race's roster, do something similar to a Lord Pack which doesn't require the same amount of work and resources as an expansion. So as for the races I'm going to choose, I have to say Primaris Space Marines first. They are Games Workshop's baby, and if they ever do something as big as Dawn of War again, these guys are going to be right on the front cover ensuring that the marketing is there. They will be fielding most or all the new Primaris models, with very few Firstborn Marines in game, that I think will be probably more part of the story in my speculation. Now Orcs have always been second to Space Marines, on the 2nd and 5th edition starter box set, to Dawn of War 1 and 2, and also Space Marine as a game. Orcs have always been there. One reason why is because they are very distinguishable as a race, and Warhammer 40k Orcs are unlike any other science fiction IP. That's why they were so good as a marketing tool. But I feel it's time for them to take a step back. No one can deny that Necrons are looking very nice with all their new models, and I think they are a perfect choice for a first enemy for you to fight. This would tie in nicely with the Indomitus box sets, but more importantly, Necrons are very distinguishable when compared to other IPs. It would also do fans justice of giving us Necrons after being teased in Dawn of War 3, and then ripping out our hearts after not giving us a Necron expansion. But having Necrons as one of the first races you engage with would possibly encourage new people who did not find Orcs interesting when looking at previous Warhammer 40k games. But I will say, it doesn't have to be Necrons. However, it does need to be one of the, finger quotes, bad races, because you need a first threat to deal with. Ideally, it needs to either be Orcs, Chaos, Demons, Dark Eldar, or Tyranids. Moving on to the second goodish race, a similar situation with the Eldar, they've let themselves go. I personally think Eldar need to take a back seat and wait until they've got their new up-to-date models before being in a new game. Marketing-wise, this would be a much smarter decision, and personally, I would rather we waited for new Eldar models to come out like the Necrons before pushing them to be in a new game. This is why I feel the Tau are probably the better pick. They've had a lot of new units over the years with the Storm Surge and Ghost Keel, and they've even been given new sculpts for the Crisis Suits and Broadsides. I know this is going to make me sound racist, but the Tau also are a great foot into the Asian market, as they are very similar to all the giant robots that Japan loves like Gundam. Tau also are probably one of the more greater spectacles of what an Apocalypse game could offer. I mean the Manta and the KX-139 are just... Mwah. So our antagonist needs to be one that sells the game. 
Skaven are the best example of this for Total War Warhammer 2, as there was a lot of hype generated around their release for that game. For another Dawn of War game, however, it comes down to Chaos Space Marines, Demons or Tyranids as the main players. Now, out of those three, Death Guard or Tyranids would seem more logical. Demons, don't get me wrong, are damn right cool, but the question of divided or undivided and which god gets more love is always a pain, as we've seen that with Total War Warhammer 3, as it's always being speculated about. The reason I chose Death Guard is because they got new models, but also you could make the same case for the Thousand Sons. But for an antagonist of my speculation, I'm going with Tyranids. First, because they're actually part of my story plan, which I will be basing around Apocalypse, so a race like Tyranids is actually going to really thrive with the numbers, but also I have another reason which I will explain later in the video. Once upon a time, there was a lovely princess. So I'm going to create a story for my version of Dawn of War 4. This will be based around Apocalypse, the races I chose, and also it's actually going to lead off from Dawn of War 3's story. So, do you know what? I need, I need a drink first. I need a drink before I fucking start this. It's going to really kill me. Oh. Get that in there. There we go. Right. Let's go. Dawn of War 4 takes place after the events of Dawn of War 3. Gorgots pisses off with his pointy stick, the Eldar don't give a shit and go back through the webway. However, Gabriel is badly damaged after his events with the demon. This results in him having to be Primarisfied, if that's even a fucking word. Oh look, they actually do have a name for that. And becomes Gabriel Angelos, Primaris Marine. During this time, a group of Primaris Blood Raven Space Marines arrive as part of the Indomitus Crusade. I don't know if that's lore friendly, but who gives a shit? To bulk up the forces of Gabriel. Gabriel then says when in hospital... Where am I? Where are my brothers? This results in him learning that a lot of the firstborn marines he fought with are still on the planet Acheron. He then learns that the demon dying awoke a tomb world that Arachron is, resulting in Necrons being unleashed on his former brothers, which he wants to go save with his new Primaris reinforcements. The first few missions are you locating your missing bros and battling weird Necron stuff. When you finally meet up with your brothers after fist bumping them, you learn the reason your brothers have not left is because there's a Necron Eonic orb about to be powered up and unleashed. Too OP? Well, I don't give a shit. Gabriel then goes, oh shit, we need to stop this, and this results in a huge assault on the Necron stronghold on the planet. This would result in Imperial Titans and War Machines, with also the Astra Militarum helping out so they can be teased for an expansion. When assaulting the Stronghold, they need to secure a position in order for the Wardlord Titan to get line of sight to fire on the Eonic Orb. Necrons obviously put up a massive defence, but in the end they do lose. When the Titan fires on the Eonic Orb, it causes a massive explosion. This explosion kills a lot of shit, but more importantly, it kills several stealth XV-25 battlesuits and XV-95 ghost kill teams, pissing off the Tau, which are harbouring a nearby moon. The Tau are then like... I'll kill the Space Marine for our Titan now! The next few missions you will be engaging the remaining Tau forces on the planet, clearing them out and leading to a big assault on the Tau stronghold base on the moon, which is fortified with KX-139s and Mantas. A massive all-out battle on the moon commences with Gabriel saying I have a bigger cock than the Tau, also getting back up from the Adeptus Mechanica, so teasing them with a new expansion. What's this button here? <laughs> this long-range missile couldn't possibly, could it? After defeating the Tau, you realise the reason they were deploying stealth teams on the planet of Acheron is because they were hunting Elicta and Gene Sealers. Realising that the Lictors are scouts for Tyranid Hive Fleets that the Poi Pheromones to tell them where to go, Gabe thinks, oh fuck. Realising that the fleet is only a few solid days out blocking all psychic communication, the Space Marines go to a nearby world cleared out by the Indomitus Crusade called Hell's Delta. I made that up. This planet has been cleared out and being made a bastion in the sector from the Indomitus Crusade. With everything prepared, the next few missions have you fighting smaller Tyranid bio life forms ahead of the Hive Fleet. However, after a few solid days, the sky turns black and the Hive Fleet has arrived. This results in a gigantic last stand of the Blood Ravens with Primaris and Firstborn Marines fighting side by side. This would have Warlord Titans engaging Hierophants, and this would be a true apocalypse spectacle. The game ends with you defeating a tendril of the High Fleet. The end of the story would tease a new threat, and since Acheron only comes out of the warp every 5,000 years, this causes warp rifts to split, resulting in demons to be unleashed with the Astra Militarum or the Inquisition reinforcing to help. The end. Who the fuck knows? We're probably going to never get a Dawn of War 4, but I will say there is a market there for a Warhammer 40k RTS. This could be Total War Warhammer 40k, or a completely separate publisher making one, but the money is there, ready for the taking. Also, if Games Workshop are going to release another Dawn of War game, I feel they should tie it in with the release of a new edition. 10th edition would be perfect, as that will most likely be in 4 years time, going off previous editions. This is also why I suggested Tyranids, but it could be World Eaters or Empress Children, one of those three that get a new model range and new sculpts. 
that would be the main antagonist in the game, tying in with a new starter box set. Anyway, we had some good memories of the Dawn of War games. I think this will be my last ever video on the subject of Dawn of War, unless we get some news, but she will always remain as one of my favourite childhood franchises. Hi. Who is it? It's... It's Carol Singers. Give him a quid and tell the bugger off. <laughs> I wanted to kill myself today To see if I still cared I love Dawn of War so much But now it feels not real The emptiness creates a hole where a Warhammer game should be I cry at night thinking about it now But I remember all the crap What did you become? My sweetest game Everyone loved you But now they don't care And you fucking betrayed me You fucking cunt I will let you die I will let you rest Yeah, you could use all that if you want. I don't need that. Yeah, <laughs>